Today's near-death encounter comes from Michelle, who drowned in a lake. She claims she had a series of external events while unconscious. She saw vivid bubbles and interacted with others. She saw burning cities and her future children's life. She began to question her beliefs about life and the world after regaining consciousness and came to a new understanding of a creator with a divine design. The year is 2023. To the best of my memory and writing skills, here is my 33-year-old story. I'll record this while I can. Please note that some of this is a memory I didn't want to remember. I tried to forget it over time. I've tried to focus on the positive, but I know both exist. My profile. Unfortunately, I'm paying the price. The year is 1971. I'm 14 and it's summer before my freshman year of high school. I applied to work at a Boy Scout summer camp for the third year. First two summers I applied, no position was offered. The camp director hired me to work in the kitchen on my last opportunity. It wasn't my intention, but I agreed. The camp proceeded smoothly. Every Saturday, all scouts departed camp, and every Sunday, new battalions arrived. Campers have to pass a swim test on their first day to engage in lake activities. Due to my junior lifeguard certification and my difficulty working in the kitchen with limited time off, I volunteered to watch the new camper's swim test. Each guard was given a long aluminum rod as a lifeline for dragging someone away. Two laps unassisted around a boat slip surrounded by docks were required. For the swim test, boys surrounded the open side of the rope. I saw numerous groups pass their tests today. However, a 13-year-old swimmer struggled and screamed out for help during one evaluation. I just needed to lower the pole for him to grip onto when I pulled him out, but my lifeguard training kicked in, and I leaped into the water feet first, legs spread apart like a bicycle. I swiftly grabbed the youngster, flipped him, and diagonally carried him over his chest. This firm grasp will prevent him from resisting me if he panics. Since he was placid and this grip was taxing, I switched to a chin carry. That mistake made the boy uneasy and less secure. In panic, he whacked my head with a roundhouse right hook before I realized what happened. And violent head hit left me stunned. I struggled to stay awake as my consciousness vanished. I sank farther into the water. Carrying the boy back to dockside was exhausting, so I required air. My chest immediately heaved, sending water into my lungs. Strangely, it wasn't bad. My full lungs lessened the pressure, but I knew I would die today. Body and arms went limp. I observed the water turn dark green while sinking. What's happening? Exactly what? Makes no sense. I see folks running on wooden walks occasionally. I see water and wooden docks. I rescued a youngster who is now alone in the ocean, desperately searching and crying. Yes, I understand. I glance down at the lake and docks from above. My submersion prevents me from seeing myself, but how? Why? I'm approximately 50 feet above water. I want to descend. I'm supposed to be down there. How do I relax? I feel like a rubber band around my back is breaking as I'm hauled up. I no longer see the water. I'm airborne. Earth is receding. I can see it shrinking. Floating in space. The sky is black save for the stars. They slowly streak the black backdrop, generating lines of light as I accelerate. Stars flashing around me make me feel like the universe is ending. Lights form a warp-like wall like Star Trek's warp drive. I'm moving quicker than imaginable, yet just sight is there. Darkness ensued. Complete darkness. I see nothing. There's nothing. I struggle to see, which disturbs me. I'm scared. I feel like I'm in a barren universe. Lifeless and endless in size. Nobody else exists. I'm alone. There is no individual, life, death, love, hatred, or salvation. I'm alone in a huge emptiness. My senses are overpowered by loneliness. I don't appreciate anything. Can't remain here anymore. I see something. Hear anything else. Do my thoughts play games? I hear laughter, but I don't like it. I'm seeing a growing bright speck, but I'm not sure what it is. The laughter is also louder. Light forms. Ha! Huh. What I'm seeing is unbelievable. It's impossible. It is. It's impossible. I see a face not a face. A laughing skull makes me wonder what it is. The laugh is sinister. He's laughing at my misfortune. A dreadful sound makes my skin crawl. 
It tells me I'll be with him forever. Others start chatting with ugly, sinister voices. They followed or were brought by the skull. I feel their presence and am afraid. These are night creatures. I can sense them, but cannot see them. They're close and dark like the environment. The skull continues to laugh. Ouch! Something has clawed me and is biting me like food. They then claw and bite me. I feel like my skin is peeling. Oh, the pain. May God help me. Too much for me. I need your help, God. Assaults continue. I remember an elderly parish priest telling me that God cannot allow wickedness. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, help me. Please help. Attacks fade as wicked things disappear into the darkness. Again, I'm alone in the black abyss, but relieved. Another pinpoint of light appeared a few moments later. Please not that skull again. It breaks into several lights as it approaches. Just what are these? They expand like soap bubbles. There are several soap bubbles. Everywhere, hundreds of thousands, then millions. Colors are vivid and transparent. Each bubble moves differently. These excellent creatures are alive and do not threaten me. Why am I seeing this? They are exactly what? Bubbles pass me slowly, then swiftly. Not sure if I'm moving or they are. Bubble movement creates streaks of red and violet light bars, encasing me in a tube of colorful light that ends in a distant vortex. I must proceed. It is time to review your life experiences, I say. Finally, is anyone there? Who said it? I see nobody. I'm watching you, says a voice. Are you my protector and angel? If you want. It felt good to be with someone, and suddenly, like a gigantic movie screen, my life unfolded before me. One would expect this to take time, yet time does not exist. Billy is five or six years old. I played with him as a kid. We play with cars behind the orange brick duplex opposite from my house. What I say hurts Billy. Not good to say. I'm harsh and vengeful. Now I can feel his pain. He's crying. I get his pain. I'm sorry, Billy. I should not have hurt you in that way. Minute by minute, review upon review, I felt the effects of my acts until my time in the lake ended. Putting myself through this, why? You review your life in order to cleanse your soul. Angel said, how are you feeling? Terrible. I am a horrible person. I had no idea how much I had harmed others. It is critical that you learn from this. I have. I accept responsibility and apologize profusely. Do you want to see it again? No, I understand the message. I hope I'm not judged harshly. The most powerful judge in the world is judging your life. When does this occur? It has already. You are the judge. Everything makes sense and I feel lighter. Feeling refreshed. I'm ready. After cleansing, I'm back in the dark, but not for long. Amazing like a portal into the dark. Great white light streaks met me. Quite exhausting. I've never seen such pure white light. It blankets me. It's not difficult to look at this strong light. Lovely and warm. The light gives me immense love and peace. Absolutely amazing. I approach. A figure with white light streaks is stopped in the doorway. In a white robe, his arms are extended and palms up. Too much light prevents me from seeing his face. We've been expecting you, but this isn't the time for you to be here. I know that voice. I know him. Why can't I identify you? You've probably met me before. I have never felt such inner tranquility. I like this place. I want to stay. I think I can stay if I hold his hand. If I touch him, I must stay. I cannot return to my old life. Avoiding return. I reach for him but can't touch him. Perhaps you should look into the future before you leave. He gestures left. A white table is on my right, made of stone, possibly marble. A flat gold dish on the table holds oil or water, dark and reflective. Behind the table are three old white males. One person is standing near a pillar or platform while two are sitting. Books may be written about it. I approach when they signal. I glance into the bowl for humanity's future. In the black liquid, I see devastation. Cities are burning. It's terrifying. I retreat. I don't want to see this. Why are you showing this to me, asks. We'd like you to take a message with you. Man needs to change his ways. However, I am only one person. What should I do? Share your talent, he said. I knew he meant my extrasensory powers. 
I'd like to ask you a question. We will accept whatever is your first response. You can't change your mind later. Do you get it? Yes, I do. What exactly is the question? Do you want your abilities and the ability to see into the future? No, I respond immediately. I just want to be normal. All right then, it's finished. I'll depart but return to the white-robed figure bearing my route. It feels great here, therefore I'd like to contribute. Can I stay? You still need to work. Don't stay. It's not your time. Please let me stay. Allow me to demonstrate. Three little bubbles erupted from the darkness on the left and grew, resembling bubbles I've seen before. As they approach, I can see the faces of three small children, two boys and one girl. Who are they? They're your kids. At 14, I'm young. I have no kids. You will have these choices. Do you notice? Return so these children can be born. One bubble is different from the others based on their faces. Why is he apart? He did not exist. He's your child, but he stays. How is that possible? He's my unborn child. Someday you'll understand. He exists and loves you while he is alive. After that, the other two youngsters shrink till they disappear. It's past time for you to return. I try to touch him again, but I'm jerked backward. The light is fading and I'm back in the dark. I'll be back. Then there's a crack. I'm back in my body with a jolt. I'm sitting in the mud at the bottom of the lake. I need fresh air. My legs twitch, my arms paddle up. Will I be able to finish? I don't think so. It has to be at least 10 or 12 feet tall. That's quite ironic, I think, still coughing and wheezing. As one of the senior waterfront teachers races down the dock toward us, I rapidly push the youngster to shore. I'm exhausted, but I make it. I helped you, the boy says. I cut him off and helped the senior instructor push him up onto the dock. He thanks me for saving the boy. I'm dazed and perplexed. I say nothing and exit the water. My body is fine, but my mind is reeling from what just happened. Before this incident, I had many paranormal encounters. After that, the activity died down. When I had my near-death experience, I was Catholic. My Catholic education continued after that incident. Interestingly, there was a PRI seminary that prepared guys for priests, but I changed religion. The details of which faith no longer mattered. I began to see the church as a means of transportation rather than a destination. My present belief is that a creator has a vast plan that emerges in its own time. Whether I met this creator is unknown. Interesting fact, I studied classical Greek in school. I studied ancient Greek fates for two years. Elderly individuals in white robes and flowing white beards were represented. According to legend, one determined a person's birth, another their death, and the third their longevity. I got goosebumps when I saw this since it resembled my near-death experience. Could I have met the fates? After a few years, I met my wife. Although she remained skeptical of my experiences, the moment I saw her, I felt like my head was in a tornado, like a tightly wound spring unleashed. I simply knew she was it. As expected, we had three children, one of whom died in utero. Things made clear to me over time. I learned how our actions may raise or harm others. I knew we'll face these effects in the future phase. I've struggled with good and evil, darkness and light, sorrow and peace. I know humanity can destroy itself. But most importantly, I believe our essence survives death. Our trip continues, providing new insights in the next chapter. As we search for life's secrets, we may return to this world in a different form, but still made of the same material. I also believe we reunite with past souls. That was how I recognized my wife at first sight. Yes, indeed. Each cycle of life makes us stronger and wiser until we finish our trip and are reborn. Michelle's contact with God adds excitement, but I'll confess, meeting God can be confusing. A video of one man's first-hand testimony of walking with God in paradise and receiving insights may interest those interested.